Zachariah's son looked out. Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, at your divine baptism in the Jordan River, you revealed that you are consubstantial with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Enlighten our minds and our hearts on this day of your great epiphany. Make us holy by the indwelling of your Spirit and make us worthy to celebrate this festival of lights, so that we may glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the one Father whose voice came from heaven testifying to his beloved Son, and to the only begotten Son who is worshipped, whose light radiated upon the river, and who accepted baptism from John his forerunner, and to the Holy Spirit who descended and appeared above the head of the Son. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. The earth rejoices in your epiphany, O Son of God, and the peoples and nations shout for joy on this day of your baptism. You have dawned from the Father and have sanctified baptism for us. O Church of the nations, proclaim the glory of the Son of God, who became man and was baptized for your sake in the Jordan River, and cry out to him. Blessed are you, O Christ, O Word of God. You willingly emptied yourself and took the form of man. You gave us a pledge of life in the waters of baptism, making us holy and heirs of your kingdom. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to sanctify us through this great epiphany. Create a new heart within us and make us newborn children of your Father and pour out forgiveness upon your flock, that we may worship you, glorify your Father, and give thanks to your Holy Spirit forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise to God. 
O Christ, word of the Heavenly Father, you became man for our sake and were baptized in the Jordan River. You became the way and the door that leads us to the Father. Grant us your grace and mercy and accept the fragrance of our incense that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Kadishat Aloho Kadishat Hayalato no Kadishat Lomo Yuto Mashiho Yetame Men Yuhanan Yetra Hear, O peoples and nations, waters have been truly blessed. All on earth be attentive, waters have been sanctified. reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, for we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to bring the light of knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body of the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, 
we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe and therefore speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Praise be to God always. Lands of the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. I burn this incense. Kyrie eleison. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life to our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the Word of the Living God. The Apostle John writes, The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and he saw them following him, and he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and you shall see. So they went and they saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. And it was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and he told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the anointed. And then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and he said, you are Simon, the son of John, but you shall be called Kepha which is translated Peter. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, We have found the Messiah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. There are many people who look upon the Pope 
as some kind of a CEO or king even. And of course, they're not totally wrong with that image, but that's not fundamentally what the office of the papacy is. What we have in the gospel today is the beginning. Kepha, rock, being bolder. Remember what St. John does. St. John, in writing his gospel, he's the fourth of the four to be written. And he writes years after the other three. The other three are very similar. And he comes in and his distinct purpose is to speak about things that the first three are not actually dealing with or elaborating in detail some of the things that they're not talking about or that they've talked about but need to be more details. And this is one of those moments. St. John gives us at the beginning of his gospel and the end of his gospel two moments with Simon, son of John, which are unique, not reported in the other gospels. And it's about him as Kepha, as rock, as boulder. Now, we're so used to the name Peter now, we don't really think about it. But this episode in which, again, it's the beginning of the gospel, and John the forerunner, John the Baptist, has two young men with him, and he points out again our Lord, this is the Lamb of God. And this time they leave John and they follow after him. So you imagine two 20-somethings running after our Lord, if not even just late teenagers, but certainly young men. And when our Lord realizes they're behind him, he turns around and he says, why are you following me? What are you looking for? And they immediately call him teacher. You have the beautiful thing in the plural, which we usually use in the Syriac, Rabban, our teacher. Where do you stay? Where are you at? And he says, come and you'll see. And so that's what they do. They follow. Now we know this is John, who's one of the two. He only gives us one name. It's Andrew. But this is very clearly a first-person report because he's going to give you the detail. It was about four in the afternoon. It was mid-late afternoon. And they stayed with him. He's giving you details that only could be known firsthand or would only be given by someone who is there firsthand. But John never mentions his name in the whole gospel. It's always indirect. And this is one of those indirect moments. Of course, then he just immediately goes on and tells the rest of the story that one of the two disciples is Andrew. And Andrew has his brother Simon. And Simon is probably older than Andrew is. Andrew is the young visionary religious, pious individual who's gone off to follow this prophet down in Judea along the Jordan. Simon, he stayed back to work. We have to get things done here. And so when Andrew goes and finds his older brother and he says, we found the Messiah, it sounds as nutty as if someone came to you and say, look, Jesus is down the street from me. He's come back already. It sounds a little unusual. But Simon goes with his brother to meet this man. And of course, it, what goes from strange becomes even stranger because when our Lord meets Simon, he points out, I know who you are personally, you're Simon, your father's name is John, but from now on you're going to be called Boulder. We're going to call you Rock. Now we can only possibly imagine the practicality of, of Simon, and Simon we know from the rest of the Gospels, is quite vivacious. He reacts quickly to things. Nothing is recorded about what he says to this. But of course, it's got to be rather strange. And of course, this is where we get. So we have, you'll be called Kepha, rock, which of course in Greek is Petra. But Petra, referring to a rock, is not a personal name. And that's why Petra in Greek became Petros which is why in Arabic we say butros, because the Arabs can't pronounce P. So we get butros or bulos for Paul. They just take it straight from the Greek. And of course, we've, manu we've maneuvered it a little with Peter. And if you notice through the gospel, what you wind up having is Simon is often referred to as Simon, or even in this case, if you notice the detail, it says that Andrew was brother of Simon Peter. So John already introduces the name that he's going to tell you is given by our Lord. And as we've mentioned before, in the Old Testament, naming changes of names are very specific about the fact of someone's different vocational status, what God expects them to be doing. So Abraham is changed to Abraham, 
Sarai is changed to Sarah. These names are changed. Hosea is changed to Joshua, Joshua. These names are changed. From that point on, they're always called by those names. Whereas with Simon Peter, we always have combinations of Simon Peter. Sometimes it's just Peter. Sometimes Simon is mentioned. We have a combination of the two because it's reminding us that this kepha is more than just a personal vocation. This is an office. This is something that is a function within the church of God. And it's part of that phrase, we have found the Messiah. We live in the 21st century. Christ historically lived on earth 20 centuries ago. How do we have that immediate contact with the Messiah? It's the reality within what we call the ecclesia, the church, and then the divine mysteries. And Kepha is part of that manifestation of the Messiah, generation to generation. So when we said there are some people who see the Pope as being CEO or king or something like this, some kind of director of trustees, a board of trustees, and this is what we see in, the, in modern times is people are like, well, the Pope can just change this doctrine or that doctrine. It's like, no. The deposit of revelation is closed at the end of the apostles. We have the exact same apostolic faith that's been handed down generation to generation. No one, including the Pope, is able to change this faith. Because the office of Kepha, the foundation, we know in the Gospel of St. Matthew, we have that middle part when it's spoken of, and you know it famously. You are Peter, you are bolder, and upon this rock. You are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And then we have in St. Luke, the moment when our Lord says to Peter, I've prayed for you individually, thou. And that when you've been converted, when you've turned definitively to the Lord, convert your brothers. Turn the others also to this. What is interesting is the only gospel that we have no record of, any of this office of Kepha, is in the gospel of St. Mark. And St. Mark is essentially St. Peter's off gospel. St. Mark who writes it is the translator, the interpreter for Peter. And yet that's the one gospel that doesn't really talk about his office. The other ones all talk about it to some degree. And of course, St. John is going to give at the very end of his gospel the whole episode after the resurrection. After, Saint, after Peter has betrayed our Lord by denying him over and over again on the night of his arrest because he's trying to save his own skin by saying, I don't know this man. I don't know what you're talking about. This is ridiculous. I have nothing to do with this. And you know, he finds it finishing by swearing and cussing away to make sure they understand, no, I don't know this. He denies him that night. And a month later, 40 days later, our Lord asked him, Peter, do you love me more than the rest of these? Because that's what he was saying at the Last Supper. And of course, what's important for us on this point today is the response after Peter kind of sheepishly says, well, you know that I love you as a friend. And our Lord says, you feed my sheep. So we have the aspect of rock. We have the aspect of the keys of the kingdom and leading the sheep, guiding. These are the three offices of Kepha in general, or specifically, and in general for what we call the priesthood. The ability to sanctify, to consecrate. And for those of you who were here last week for the two hour ceremony for baptism, you see the foundation of rendering and transforming, con consecrating to render sacred to God in priesthood. But it's also the aspect of teaching. That's an aspect really of a rock, the foundation. What makes us Christian is what we actually believe. Not a club that we belong to, but, but the belief that is central. That is the rock aspect of the faith. That's the unchanging aspect, which is our heritage. And every man who becomes Kepha in his generation is also an heir of that heritage. He's not a creator of it, he's not a director of it, nor does he control it. And so that aspect of doctrine is the teaching office, to be able to transmit this doctrine. You will have it in the intercessions in this anaphora of St. John Chrysostom where it says for the bishops, for the patriarchs, for the priests, teach them the word of truth so that they may transmit it faithfully. 
And so the third aspect of leading, guiding, it's not controlling, it's not a tyranny, it's not a kingship in that sense. It's a direction towards the kingdom, towards the Lord God. So when we go back to this aspect, a lot of times people see the Pope as being kind of this pinnacle thing where on top is the Pope and then everybody else down. And that's understandable. In some, and often ways it's been betrayed that way, a bit, uh, portrayed that way in the Latin church. But in the Eastern churches, our vision is much more of a hub. It's an intercommunion of churches, of the 20 Catholic churches, all the intercommunion of them with the office of Kepha in the center. So that Kepha exercises as a point of intercommunion, that's why we call it the Apostolic See. It's also why up until the 1960s, if you ever saw a sign, we have a sign in our back, we had it down uh, where at our church, the cornerstone that we had that's at Ground Zero in Lower Manhattan, you have the Roman Catholic Maronite Church. And you're thinking, but we're not Latins. Why does it say Roman on it? Because Roman is the aspect of Kepha. The Bishop of Rome and the patri Patriarch of Rome is for the Latin Church. But the office of Kepha, the office of Peter, is much larger. It's for the entire church. It's not just for the Latins. It just happens that the Latin Church also coincides historically with the office of Petros, if you understand the connection. So everyone who is in communion with Rome in that sense is Roman, even though we belong to different churches. So he acts as a hub. And that's why also he is the sovereign teacher, which is why when we talk about infallibility, and that will be a whole other sermon, it's the idea that when definitively a decision is made on a doctrine, on morals, or on faith, we have the rock-solid surety that this will not be a failure. That's what infallibility means. Doesn't mean it's inspiration, doesn't mean he's a prophet, doesn't mean it's the best way to explain the doctrine, but the explanation given will be completely in coinciding with that rock which is given to us in the deposit which is closed with the last of the death, death of the last of the apostles with St. John. And then lastly, it's a court of appeal. It is that last place where amongst the churches, the patriarchs, bishops, you can have a recourse when there's a decision that is disagreed upon between the upper levels of guidance. So a few weeks ago, I was speaking with an Orthodox member here in Maine who belongs to the Orthodox, one of the Orthodox churches here in Maine. And it was very interesting because he said, well, you know, the church in Richmond, which is Russian Orthodox church outside of Russia. It's a long explanation, don't worry about it. But all the others are, are originally Greek Orthodox churches, the other four. And he said to me, well, you know, the church in Richmond excommunicated us, so we don't have communion between us. And at first I thought, well, why would that happen? And then it dawned on me. You may, have you may have remembered seeing in the morning Sentinel, maybe last year, about a year ago, maybe last summer, last spring. The Ukrainians, amidst all the other confusions going on in the Ukraine, had a public referendum nationally of whether they were going to declare their church to be autonomous as the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Because technically, up until this time, they're part of the Russian Confederation of Churches, the Run Russian Orthodox Church. So, of course, everybody voted in their nationalism, yes, we want a pure national Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and they voted yes, 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 and we'll vote for the prime minister back into office. Well, Moscow was furious. This is the equivalent of some, you know, some part of some part of the Catholic Church saying, ah, we're not in union with the Pope anymore. Well, that's schism. And so the Patriarch of Moscow said, we don't accept that political vote that's going to separate an ecclesiastical structure. And so therefore the Russian Orthodox Patriarch excommunicated the Patriarch of Constantinople who approved that separation. Now, all that may sound very technical, but what's the big thing about it is even if the Patriarch of Constantinople is considered in the East among the Orthodox to be first among equals, he's not above them. 
He can't approve something. And, be, and on technical basis between the Patriarch of Constantinople and of Moscow, they're exactly the same. And this is why the Orthodox Church is shattered and fragmented and broken up, because in the end, they're all among equals. So who resolves the issue? Well, the Lord God himself set Kepha up for this. And the appeal to Kepha is the way that you had a recourse. He doesn't control, he doesn't direct the other churches. But he is a court of appeal, we would say. And that whole issue, which is unresolvable between patriarchs in Istanbul and in Moscow, and Paul will remain that way for a long time, would be resolved by that court of appeal. So the papacy is not his CEO, it's why Francis can't change doctrines, no matter how much the media wants it. Because he isn't just as much an heir and an inheritor of the patrimony given to us in the apostolic tradition as any one of us in these pews. He is there as his function is to control and to make sure that it is held and preserved in its pristine tradition. But that's his office as Kepha, boulder, rock. So that's the meaning of the gospel today. It is part of the office of manifestation that we have found the Messiah. We have found the Christ. And so in one way it sounds very technical, but it's just for us to consider really the profound theological and scriptural basis of what the man that we call Papa, who happens to be living in Rome, is in the centrality of hub, court of appeal, and that focus point of intercommunion of all of the dozens, the 20 some Catholic churches, inter interlocked and intercommunion with Kepha. So that's the importance of why Simon Peter is sometimes called Peter, oftentimes called Simon Peter, but after the moment of our promise of the keys by our, by, uh, by our Lord at the resurrection, to, uh, feed my sheep, in the Acts of the Apostles, he's always referred to as Peter, Kepha, the one who is the foundation so that we, in each generation, can also find the Messiah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of the Father, the Lord and the Lord of God. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the 
forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. <laughs> The sheets for the you have the sheets for the epiphany transfer him the Lord reigns clothed in majesty Mighty Lord in God, you accept the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life in your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her, chose, her spouse, the Chosen One, St. Mary, and St. Jude, and St. Macarios. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. this Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Peace, love, and faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. May God's peace be with us. Amen. O Lord, unhoy from all creation, you are peace reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin. You are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness, may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. Holy, 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 mighty Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your great glory. O Son in the hearts, blessed is he who has come, and who will come in the name of the Lord. O Son in the hearts. Glory to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us, for he is your only Son. In Sabe Lachmo Bida, Kodi Shonto, Ubara Hukadesh, Yabel Talmida, Kodo Mara, Sabahola Mene, Kulho, O no Denita, Pahoro Adil, Dahlo Faikun, Wahlov Sagi. Yabel Talmi Tau Koromar, Sabish Tau Mene Pulho, Ono Denita, 
دمون دیل دیان تیکی خداتو دخلو فای کون و خلف ساگیه می تیشد و می تیهم خوصویان خامه و خاینان قلم علمی This in memory of me, each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. O Word of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name, by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, O Holy Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you. is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Manin morio, manin morio, manin morio, nite mor rojo chayu kadisho, od nachen nalainu ar korbono chono. Spread the body of Christ our God, be for us a pledge of the life to come. A body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies. A body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, 
and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Ashada Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully. With justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will, and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your holy church that you established on the solid rock of the true faith, and send her vocations to the holy priesthood and religious life. In a world of distractions which pull us away from properly loving you and our neighbor, may those who you have called to serve your holy church respond to you and have the courage to follow your will. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the holy fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious Saint Stephen the Archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. To all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints. And in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. And rest, O oh God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. O oh Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways into your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will, that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. have united, O oh Lord, your divinity with our humanity, and our humanity with your divinity, your life with our mortality, and our mortality with your life. You have assumed what is ours, and you have given us what is yours. For the life and salvation of our souls, to you be glory forever. O oh Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O 
Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving <clears throat> altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one holy, holy Father, Father, one, one holy, holy Son, one, one holy, holy Spirit. spirit. Blessed Bless be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. And we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy to rest your right hand, full of blessings, upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the Holy Cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So it has certainly been beautiful to have you all brave the weather to come in today. Lovely to see you. Steve and I thought, well, we'd be it. <laughs> so very, always especially blessing to see you. Uh, may the angels surround you. Please be safe on the roads as you return home. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. 
May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.